And today, Wednesday, July the 29th, 1998. From NBC News, this is Today with Katie Couric and Matt Lauer. The good news for pet lovers is that more places will now accommodate the entire family, including the furry, four-legged, or the feathered. On the road with your pet list, more than 4,000 mobile-rated lodgings that welcome pets. Andrea Arden is director of the Manhattan Dog Training and Behavior Center, and she's got some tips this morning for traveling with your pets. Hi, Andrea. Hello. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. All right, we first should introduce the, the, the animals that Very are helping important. us yeah. with this segment. This is Zeus. Yep, he's a, a little, little chihuahua. He's about three years old. Just said something about Taco Bell. I don't know what it was. And, this is, all the time. and this is Enzo. Yep, he's an Italian Spignone, and he's about eight months old. Okay, now before we talk about these specific dogs, are some pets more appropriate for traveling? Absolutely. I mean, most pets can travel, but the most important thing to consider is how your pet deals with new situations. These two dogs, for example, are dealing with a very hectic situation in a great way. They're both seen pretty calm. Right. But although if you have this, an animal this guy's who, shaking a little he's bit. He's shaking a little bit. Yeah. Um, but if you have an animal who really is not comfortable with new situations, he's probably going to be happier at home. Now, before you tell us how to prep your your creature for the trip, for mm -hmm. the you know the road trip, why are mo more hotels and and facilities accommodating animals. Has there been just a huge demand for this? I think so. I think it's just supply and demand. I think more owners want to travel with their pets, and so hotels are welcoming them. Welcoming them. And I also think it has to do with the fact that America is becoming a lot more pet friendly, right. which of course is a great thing. And some people are really nervous about the idea of putting their, their dogs or cats in a kennel for two, a week or two at a time. Well, there are some great kennels, right. um, but I think people just like to, you know, they're part of the family, so why not bring them on a family vacation? Okay, so tell me about what you can do to prepare your animal for it. Well, trip. the most important thing is that you want to bring an animal on the road with you who is socialized, mannerly, and house trained. Those are the three most important things, whether it's a small dog, a cat, or a big dog. Right. Um, and so what you want to do, the best thing to do is to practice at the home game before going on the away game. Right. So that means, um, think about it, when do most pets travel? When, when they, they go, go to the, to the vet. vet. So no wonder most pets don't like to travel. But the way that you can teach your pet to travel is by taking them on errands around town. So for example, we would take Zeus and put him in his little carrier, bring him to the bank, bring a little pocket full of treats, and when somebody looks in and says, oh, he's so cute, say, here you go, would you like to give him a treat? Uh -huh. What that's going to do is it's going to teach him a few things. First of all, to like traveling, because he goes somewhere where people give him treats. Right, and of instead course, of getting also, a shot. Exactly. And of course, to, to like people, because people are giving him food. Right. The other thing you want to do that's very important in order to get the, the third point, which is settling down, when you ask them to, like these two dogs are doing, they're being relaxed and calm, right. is you want to teach them to do so. Okay. Um, you can't expect them to. So what you do is, as you're walking down the street doing your errands, taking your dog in the car and you get out, um, every so often just ask your dog to stop, sit, lay down and give them a treat. Then walk another 10 steps or so, ask your dog to lay down again, give them a treat. If the dog's in the carrier, just put the carrier down, wait until they've relaxed, and then give them a treat. So that really does teach them. You're just to reinforcing, down. yeah, you're ignoring the behavior you don't like and you're reinforcing the good behavior. You know, when we're talking about vacations, these are long road trips, and that's a lot different than just taking, you know, running errands to the bank, this place or the other place. I mean, how do you help a, a, humans have a, a hard time, time sitting yeah. in a car? You know, are you are yeah. we there yet, Dad? Right <laughs> away. So how do you make these guys uh, used to a really long time in the car? Well, it's the same thing as with kids. I mean, you have kids, so you know that what you do is you slowly encourage increase the amount of time that you ask them to be relaxed in the car. Right. Um, and be fair to them, just like with people. If you're going to stop for a moment and get out and go and get something to eat or go to the bathroom, be sure to let your pet do the same thing. How often should you stop and it give your pet on the a breather? It depends on the animal. For an animal, let's say Zeus's age, who's three years old, he's fully house trained, you can maybe stop every, you know, four or five hours. Right. For an animal uh, like, like Enzo here, who's a bit younger, um, he probably doesn't have as much bladder control, so you want to stop a little more often. All right. Tell us about carriers. What are some of the best carriers? Well, it depends. For small animals, um, this is one of the types that's very popular. It's called a Sherpa bag and those are great they have ventilation um, but I would suggest for any dog what you want to do or cat is be sure to have them secure in some way when they're in the car because I was gonna say can you let them run around the car no, no and I know people think oh it looks so great to have a dog with his head out the window the problem is that if you do a short stop a dog can go flying forward just like a person right and God forbid they decided to bounce around and they distracted you while you were driving so you can get a carrier or the other option is you can use a harness which goes around the, the dog's body right and then you can use the harness to strap them somewhere in the car so where's what's the, an ideal place to strap them should just they anywhere be on the secure floor, on the Seat. It doesn't matter. My dogs actually are more comfortable in the seat. I think they like to see what's going by. It helps them to alleviate a little bit of the car sickness. Right. You and know? we should point out that right now the airlines have stopped allowing people to travel with their yeah. pets temporarily yeah. because of the hot weather, right? Well, I think it's, you know, people should take that as a caution that whether you're going in the airlines or in your car, 
um, hot weather is very, very dangerous for animals. I mean, we see the effect it's having on people. And so don't leave them in the car with no, the windows rolled up. Not. Ever, no, ever, ever, ever. No, okay. no, even the windows down even don't help. You need to take your dog out of the car. Okay, that's yeah. a good pointer. Andrea, thanks so much. Thank nice you. to meet you. Thanks. <laughs> and we'll be back in a moment. This is Today on NBC.